welcome to the channel. I'm going to show you how to build this solar generator, so stay tuned. Here are the components of the solar generator build. Got our 100 amp hour sealed, less, sealed lead acid AGM battery. This is going to be our outlets on the outside. We got our USB power switch and a 12 volt cigarette lighter outlet. It's going to be our battery monitor, our charge controller. Here's our inverter. We are going to have a wireless pad on top, our fuse box. There's one of the fans, but we will have an in inlet fan and an exhaust fan. And then we're going to use this uh, battery maintainer. It's for AGM and also we'll do LifePo. Um, now the reason I'm using the AGM battery is because I had it. I'm trying to do this build with some parts that I had. Had the uh, charger, had the um, inverter. Now this is a modified sign inverter. But what I'm just trying to do is show you how you can build a simple solar generator that you can use in the event of emergencies. So here are the components and uh, we'll update you as we go along. Here's the box we're going to use. This is an old Craftsman that uh, I got for Christmas probably 15 to 20 years ago. Had a few items in it, but we're going to convert this into a solar generator. Okay, just wanted to show you these cables. Here are my battery charger. And I'm not going to hook them up to the battery with alligator clips. So I'm going to cut these off and run this through the outside of the box so I can just plug it up when I need it. But these will be hardwired to the positive and negative terminal. Same with the inverter. These two wires go to the inverter. And this is what comes with the inverter and I'm going to have to cut those alligator clips off to hardwire it to the battery. So I just wanted to let you know that and if you have an inverter I mean, you can use alligator clips, but this thing's going to be jostled around, rolled around, and I don't want uh, it to short out, so I'm going to hardwire it. Here's how we're going to support the battery. Got some 1x2s. Keep it from going backwards. We've got some foam in the bottom that it sits in, so it cannot go forwards. And then we mount 1x2 uh, on each side there. And that'll keep it from going side to side and I did try it and it will lift in and out of there pretty easy uh, for changing the battery or modifying it all right this is the hole for the fan we got our holes drilled for the grill so we're going to mount that real quick and we'll do the same thing on the other side and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done okay this is going to be the exhaust fan basically the screws come with the fan four of them in just drilled a hole with a hole saw and attach the screws you can see the fan down there and that'll provide some exhaust to keep the operation of the solar generator cool this is where we're going to have our solar come in basically we got our Connectors right there, MC4. We're going to screw this down, drill a hole right here, run the wires through, and that'll hook to our charge controller. Okay, we got our outlets mounted. The wire run through, and it'll come up. Basically, it's going to plug right into there. So that's how we'll get our outlets to work from the inverter. So I went ahead and drilled five holes here. Got some USB, some power switches. I'm gonna go ahead and use these first three right now. And we're gonna add a couple things here and I just went ahead and drilled the holes while I had it apart. Okay, I'm hooking the wireless charger up and basically what I did was use some alien tape and just tape this down. And this stuff is really, really good. It's not going anywhere. 
got our plug right here, just drilled a hole. And it'll come through, and then this will plug into the inverter. I wish it had a USB, but uh, that's fine. It'll work with the inverter. So we'll get that put on and plugged in and, and see if it works. All right, we're going to mount our charge controller right there. Fuse box there. We've already got it mounted. Just got to run the wires up. I got a hole there for the wires for the charge controller. And it's not mounted yet because I think it's going to be easier to put the wires on and then mount it. And then we do have our inverter mounted and the wires run down through. If you look here, we have our shunt for um, gauge and we've got the negative terminal hooked it we'll hook it to the negative here in a little bit so i'm just trying to show you the progress all right here's the finished product you can see we've got our inverter or excuse me our uh, ac outlets right there we've got our power gauge if that will focus we've got our usbs over here this is just a flip up, you turn it on, and it's going to tell us what our volts are. We got our auxiliary port here for running our refrigerator. And everything is working on it. So basically we can just plug these on, and the way I mounted this was the same way I mounted the wireless charger. Let's take a look at it real quick. We have it mounted there, it's plugged in, you can see, and it's charging. We'll take that off for a second, but I use the same type of tape to put this on. And you can see this sucker is on there, it's alien tape. And we're just going to flip our handles up here. Take a look at the inside. Then I can just un unplug this lid out of the way now again I used a modified sine wave, wave inverter because that is what I had I want to upgrade this with a pure sine wave inverter but for this purposes it's working basically you can see that it is on we have it wired here with this going down the negative is going to um, the shunt the positive is going to the positive terminal of the, the battery and then I see I got a little room for storage. This is what I can charge it from the wall with. We've got our charge controller here. And basically I ran my DC off the load side of the uh, charge controller. And the reason I did that rather than taking it straight to the battery is, is this has some protection on it um, for the battery. So it will kick the battery off in an over voltage, under voltage type thing. So. Um, I wanted to use the the load side and we just basically have take our fuse box off here give me a second and we have the negative going here we got a negative block right there this is our positive coming from our charge controller so these outlets right here are coming up and running to this 15 amp fuse. And the negative is um, right here. I'm sorry, I couldn't see it there for a second. The negative is right there. And then our positive is coming to this uh, fuse right here. Our fans right now are running off these two. We've got one on this side and they are both running. This is the um, out. So we got air coming out on this side. We got it pulling air in on this side. And let me see if I can light that up a little bit. So we've got the inlet pulling air through and the exhaust coming over here. And that worked out really well. I got a couple extra holes here in the bottom because I'm gonna put a main switch control the battery because right now 
um, it's going to have the charge controller on at all times but I didn't have a switch that would work so I've got that ordered and we're going to put a main power switch in just to keep it shut down all the time and what we'll do is we'll do a little testing on it plug some things into it and see and you can see I got some storage here too which is kind of nice so it left me with plenty of room here it kept it kind of neat on the top and then basically if I need to get into the battery I can just lift this up and get in there the wires are long enough here underneath so when I lift the top up I can get in there and work if I need to do anything but that's what we're looking at so we have a 750 watt inverter it has a 750 watt continuous it's 1500 watt uh, surge we have a 100 amp hour Renogy AGM sealed lead, lead acid battery and we just went with a cheap PWM charge controller right now um, again this item will be upgraded as well as this but this is what I had and I just wanted to show you guys how you can put together a solar generator with um, some parts that you have and then just by adding a few parts you can uh, uh, put it together you could even go more simpler than this and this isn't overly complicated because basically what we got here is is three DC circuits two for the fan one for these outlets right here we got a power delivery port for USB-C and then a quick charge 3.0 port and then our um, cigarette lighter adapter plug there so we'll plug our bouge RV into it and let you see it run and we'll plug some things into the inverter here and uh, show you what it's doing and I really like this gauge because it's telling me how many amp hours I have it will give me a percentage and I don't know if that's showing up on the camera very well but uh, it's showing 98.5 percent charged and I'll show you how I can charge this thing uh, we might start with that so hang on okay we got our four and a half amp battery charger right here um, and it's got an SAE connection right there and right now I just have this run through this extra hole that I made um, but it's hooked to the shunt and it's hooked to the positive side of the battery so basically all I have to do is plug that in and you can see that it is going to see the what the state of the battery is and it's doing that right now so it takes a few seconds and then it'll start charging and we'll see that by well it's showing charging now but uh, let's take a look there we go you can see it's moving there so it's indicating a charge right there so it's at 98.5% so this is a way you can charge it from the wall and I really like that because that is going to be more convenient because this is going to be one that's like I say not that I'm going to use primarily but I can use it to supplement some of my other solar generators but uh, this does have you know good capacity it's a 100 amp hour battery um, with the AGM lead acid or sealed lead acid though we probably won't take it below 50 percent so we're looking at about 600 uh, watt hours of, of use out of this battery i could go as low as 20 percent if i'm not worried about the you know preserving the the battery life of the the agm sealed lead acid battery but um, we'll see how it goes because i can't could get up to you know take it down to as much as 20 percent but that would reduce the life um, span of the battery reduce my charge cycles but um, we'll see how it goes but that's how you can charge it right there with the AC outlet. The other way we can charge this is with solar. So basically I've got my MC4 connectors right here. I've got a wire running in to the charge controller. Which I'll show you right here. And that's these two wires right here. So um, we'll be able to hook it up to solar and, and charge it by, by solar too. Um, I don't know the exact wattage amount the it, it can take up to 
uh, 50 volts of open circuit. So I imagine I can, you know, put 200 watts of solar on this with no problem and, and uh, charge it that way. So we're going to try that and see how that goes. But um, you can charge it with solar panels as well as the wall. All right, let's show it running something else here. We've got a Vitamix. We're going to turn it on. Now we just got some water in here so you can see it run. And it's running it, no problem. Let's see how many amps we're pulling on it. That's 36, almost uh, right around 36 amps it's pulling on the Vitamix. So this inverter can handle that, no problem. Our battery's at 97.9. So this will run some big appliances in an emergency. So there you go. All right, we got a percolator coffee pot right here. We've got it plugged in and it is pulling some power. I don't know if you can see the gauge, but it's about 75% of the, the wattage on the 750. And we can hear it starting to heat up. So you can make an old-fashioned cup of coffee this way. It's pulling 48 amps. So this will run a coffee pot and make you a pot of coffee. Now I'm not going to make you sit here and wait for it. So, But I just wanted to let you see that and see how it's working. Okay, it's a 30 quart Bouge RV. Got a Bose Bluetooth speaker there. And I couldn't charge, or excuse me, find my DC adapter, so I just used the AC plug on the Bouge RV just to show you the inverter anyway. So you can see we got it plugged in. We have this port working. You heard it click on there. And then uh, you can see here we're set to 21 degrees. I had it plugged in the back, so it's kind of already cold. But I don't know if you can hear it. The compressor is running. And this is running our Bouge RV. And we're at 98%. This little icon here, which again, I don't know how clear this is coming through, but it's showing that we're going down. And we're pulling 4.85 amps. Now that's going to be different than what's on the charge controller because it's just for the DC. We'll go to where it's at. It's showing 1.1 1 .1 amps for powering these and the fans and charging the Bose speaker. So you can see this thing does work. It's running the Bouge RV. And we've got 98% of the battery left. Nice little setup. Like I say, we'll do some upgrades on it, but just wanted to show you how this thing goes, how it works. And um, I hope this has been informative to you. Like and subscribe to the channel. Um, so we can keep making videos and, and keep growing. I appreciate your viewership and, and have a blessed day. Thank you.